What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we're going to talk about the 360 degree bend rule. The 360 degree bend rule is a portion of code, it's actually mentioned 11 times in the NEC um, over different types of conduit. But essentially it boils down to you cannot have more than 360 degrees of bends in any run of conduit that is between two different pull points. So if you got a junction box over here and a junction box over here, you cannot have over 360 degrees total of bends between them. So this could be 490s, they actually call it four quarter bends. It could be a mixture of 90s and 30 degree bends and 60 degree bends, doesn't matter. But you can't have more than 360 degrees of bends total. So it's very, very difficult to pull conductors through when you have more bends. It is possible, I've, <laughs> I've done some dumb shit in the past. I think like early on in my career, uh, I was a, an apprentice and I was running all this conduit and I spent all this time probably running 20 three quarter pieces of EMT up from different panels and making sure that they were all pretty and they came together really nice and you know they bent 90 and 90 and then a 45 45 up into another uh, portion of the ceiling and then 90 to cross and then split out in all kinds of different directions and I didn't put any pull points in them. And my journeyman walked in and he looked up and followed the conduit and he's like, what did you fucking do? And I'm like, what are you talking about? That's the best pipe work I've ever seen. Like, it's beautiful. He's like, yeah, but you're never gonna be able to pull anything in it. He's like, you're fucking pulling that. And he just walked away. And I was like, fuck you, I'll pull it then. I went over one end and I tried sticking that damn fish tape in. I probably had a thousand degrees of bends. <laughs> and that fish tape went up into like three or four bends and it just stopped. I could not get it to go any further. And I was probably only halfway through all of the bends. So I learned a really good lesson at that point. Uh, don't put too many bends in your conduit. All right, guys, I promise no sponsorship on this episode. I don't, fuck, I don't know what's happening. Okay, so Rogers got me on this one. I gotta do a sponsorship. Uh, so thank you Rogers for sponsoring this episode. Rogers is a huge electrical contracting company that is in Atlanta, Georgia. You've heard me talk about them a million times. Um, so if you're interested in transitioning into like commercial work or service work more specifically, check out the link below. Um, it's possible, I mean like I've had situations where somebody in a job that I've gone out to has put like six 90s in a run of uh, conduit. It is very possible if you, it depends on the situation really, it depends on the bends, depends on how many conductors you're trying to pull in, depends on the head on your fish tape. But in some situations it, it is possible to pull conductors through six or seven uh, bends or you know more than 360 degrees. It is really fucking difficult though at a certain point to pull any of that wire through. More often than not, you end up damaging the insulation because you're pulling so hard, and you're yanking on that stuff. Um, so per code, uh, let's look at 358.26 for an example. So 358 is the EMT section of code. 0.26, you're gonna find 0.26 is where all of these 360 degree rules are posted in all of the different conduit articles. So like if we went back to look at rigid, we're in 352.26. 358.26 um, so it's an easy way for you to find it but it just goes to say um, bends number in one run there shall not be more than the equivalent of four quarter bends or 360 degrees total between pull points for example conduit bodies and boxes um, so that's really what they're trying to do they're just trying to limit you it doesn't have any other reason other than damaging insulation uh, if you're trying to yank conductors through a pipe, you're going to damage the insulation. So um, that is why the NEC puts that in there as a minimum. A lot of people ask, what about box offsets? Do I have to count them? And I don't. Um, really the general rule of thumb is if the bend is not more than the diameter of the conduit, then you're fine. So if you have a 
one inch piece of conduit and you're bending it less than one inch for your offset, there's still a straight through path through that offset. So the conductors can still travel, you know, in some kind of straight path through that. But if you're talking about an offset that is like a large offset, well then the conductors have to change directions to get through the other end of that pipe. So you're creating two points of friction. But again, a box offset is just a tiny little kick. So essentially you could hold that conduit and still see from one end all the way through, see daylight on the other end of it. So if you can see daylight, maybe that's a better way of thinking about it. So as long as your, your bend is not larger than the diameter of the conduit, you don't have to count them. But if you're talking any other bends other than the, uh, the box offsets in between there, just make sure that you add up everything. So if you got a 90 and then another 90, that's 90 plus 90. And then if you have a 45 and a 45 for an offset, that's another 45 plus 45, another 90 plus 90. You have to add all of those together and make sure um, that you're below 360. Now there are some people out there too that say, well, if I bend a 45 in one direction and a 45 in the other direction, doesn't the vector diagram of those make the, the angles cancel out? No, they're still gonna be 90 degrees if you have two 45 degree bends. Think about the surface area of that fish tape and those wires having to pull across one bend and another bend at the same time. It's adding resistance, it's adding drag to the conductors. So anyways, that's pretty much all I got to say on the matter. Uh, let me know if you guys have any other questions. I love you crazy people and I will see you in the next one.